January 30, 1924, Lloyd Chudley Alexander was born in West Philadelphia to Allen and Edna Alexander. Lloyd's father, Allen, was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica by a British father and a Portuguese mother. He immigrated to the United States where he met and married Edna Chudley. Edna's father, Harry Chudley, a native of England, had been bothered by what he called the excessive pretensions of the British and sought life in a less structured society. So he packed his bags and boarded a ship to America. When he arrived, he changed the spelling of his last name to make it appear more American. In that same spirit, when Lloyd was in high school, he decided to drop his middle name entirely. Lloyd does not like pretense of any kind. And he thought that Chudley was pretentious. He thought it was much simpler to be called Lloyd Alexander. And interestingly, Grandfather Chudley, C-H-U-D-L-E-I-G-H, didn't like pretense either, and he shortened his name to C-H-U-D-L-E-Y. And in that same sort of spirit, Lloyd got rid of the pretense in his name by simply removing the whole name. In addition to Lloyd, the Alexander household consisted of Lloyd's father, who was a successful stockbroker in Philadelphia, his mother, who was often busy with visitors and extended family, and Lloyd's older sister, Flo. When Lloyd was five years old, he started first grade a whole year younger than most of his classmates. Thanks to his father's success, he was sent to a private school in Philadelphia. However, when the stock market crashed in 1929, young Lloyd's life would drastically change. The Great Depression certainly had effect, an effect on the Alexander family. Um, Lloyd's father uh, was a successful stockbroker, and when the Great Crash happened, um, he kind of lost it all. Um, that necessitated the family moving outside from Philadelphia, which was the big fancy city and private schools, to come here to the suburbs of Drexel Hill, uh, where they had a, a little bit of a more modest life, uh, attended public schools, and Lloyd's father then took a number of, of different jobs to, to get by and, and earn, a li earn a living to support his family. In April of 1930, six-year-old Lloyd fell ill with pneumonia. He missed half a year of school, but it took even longer for him to fully recover. When he returned to school, he was forced to sit and watch as the other students participated in the physical activities, causing young Lloyd to be the target of many of his schoolmates' jokes. Lloyd didn't like school. He didn't have many friends and wasn't very social. Even within his home, he was often alone. It doesn't seem to me that he had close intimate relationships in his family. He knows his mom loved him, um, he loved her, his sister sort of watched out for him, he liked Flo, they weren't close. Um, he and his dad <clears throat> didn't throw footballs or go to baseball games together. Despite his lonely childhood, Lloyd found something that would help him through it. Books. His earliest memory is a clear picture of sitting and reading a book. Although no one else in his immediate family was much of a reader, Lloyd found books around the house and found that he could escape through their pages. His early reading was really nothing much more than decorations in the house. Uh, his parents thought that it would look good to have some books on the shelves at the house. So they went to a secondhand store and bought a number of books um, and put them on the shelves. And that in many ways was his salvation um, as a youth. He, he voraciously read all of those books and uh, was especially fond of uh, things like legends and stories of, of great daring do at the time, the Arthurian tales, uh, King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table. Uh, all, those, all those stories captured his fancy as a young child. At a very early age, Lloyd would wander his house asking whoever might be there to read to him. Around age three, he taught himself how to read and he was reading well before he started first grade at age five. We're not talking picture books. This was 
um, picture books. There were picture books, but he would read longer books. Uh, and he said, I think, that he read, before he went to school, he probably read 200 books. He learned how to read early. He liked to read. He found great pleasure in it. He found great satisfaction in it. Lloyd's love of reading, along with his creative imagination, led him to discover new ways to fully participate in the reading experience. One of these ways was something that he called the Eat and Read program. Eat and Read means if you're reading a book, there is a food, a food associated with it or a food that's actually mentioned in it, and for him to participate more fully in the reading experience, he wanted to be eating that food while he was reading. He'd read Robin Hood and he wanted venison, but they couldn't find any venison. But his mom kept looking until she found him a piece of venison. I'm not sure he had to do it with every book. I don't know if he did. But the idea of the participation at a different level, at a different sensory level, appealed to him. And he took it very seriously. It didn't take long for Lloyd to realize that he didn't like school. Thanks to his love of reading, by the time he started school, he was already well ahead of his classmates in many areas. Because of this, Lloyd was often bored and had a hard time paying attention. Although he disliked formal education, Lloyd Alexander learned how to learn and loved exploring through books. He would never lose that love of learning. Lloyd set the goal at a young age to become an author and then used his love of learning to work toward that goal. As far as writing goes, I guess I wanted to write from the time I was about 13. And of course, when I told my parents that, they were shocked and horrified. They said, this is the worst possible thing you could do. That writing is awful. You have a terrible life. It's just, just impossible. As it turned out, they were quite right, but I didn't believe them at the time. And I was bound determined that I wanted to be a writer. Well, he's going to high school. He's reading every day. He's writing. He's submitting short stories and poetry. He would never tell any of his teachers he was doing any of that. It was almost a, a pride thing. Uh, he, he helped draw the line between school and learning. And he loved to do what he was doing on his own outside of school, but, but he didn't credit school at all for helping him get any place intellectually or academically that he wanted to be. When he was starting fifth grade, Lloyd excelled on the achievement test and was moved up to the sixth grade. Since he had started school a year younger than the other students, this now made him two years younger than the rest. By the time Lloyd graduated from high school, he was only 16 years old and had to figure out what to do with his life. There were a few things that he thought he might be, that he might do when he was an adult. Um, and an archaeologist was the first one when he was very young. And then he thought he might be a cartoonist artist. And then he was the most serious about being a priest. Uh, and n not so much a pure spiritual priest, but priests were active in social causes and helping people, and he liked that very much. To be a priest, he had to get a degree. So he had to go to college. So he said, I'll go to college. But he didn't have any money to send himself to college after high school. His dad didn't have any money to send him to college, and so he had to get a job. His dad pointed that out relatively quickly, and also he had to start paying board and room. Um, that's what you did when you were out of high school. You're on your own now. You're taking care of yourself. His dad helped him find a job as a bank messenger at one of the most respected banks in town, the Fidelity Philadelphia Trust Company. Lloyd hated the job, but figured that if he saved his money, in 18 months, he could save enough to go to a year of college. During that period, in fear of falling behind and in an effort to prepare for the rigors of a college education, Lloyd continued learning through books. He knew he would be taking a psychology class, so before he started his freshman year, he read all of Adler, Jung, and Freud. By the time he started his first semester of college, he was greatly disappointed that his classes lacked the challenge he was seeking, and so he dropped out after only a semester and two days. 